David was born and raised outside the United States, learning English as a second language. David realized that speaking the language alone was, would not suffice. With almost a decade of Toastmasters experience, David has served in multiple officer roles, led several TLI sessions, spoke at multiple district conferences, competed at district uh, division, I'm sorry, division speech contests. This all started since David formed a corporate club for a Fortune 500 company back in 2010. David has been a very busy man. David is currently serving as District 10 Area 25 Director in the Cleveland East Side area, and his prayers are with you and all, imp all of us impacted by COVID-19 to stay healthy, stay safe, and stay positive during this time. David's speech is titled Conference 10 Takeaways. It's from Visionary Communication Pathway um, level five, project number four, lessons learned. And the focus of the speech is to present a speech about lessons learned meeting, from a meeting that the speaker facilitated or presented a speech, present a speech about the speaker's leadership experience facilitating the lessons learned during the meeting. District 10 conference takeaway, please welcome Mr. David Young. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster, guests. Can you hear me? Can you see me? And can you see the slides? Give a thumbs up if you can get it. Today, I would like to share my experience that I encountered through the conference recently held a month ago. A lot of you have participated. Thank you, my bottom of my heart, not just for District 10, but also from all the Toastmasters that have met throughout the Toastmaster year in Cleveland, Ohio. I would like to share some of the behind the theme work, how they led to my lessons and the project that I was doing to prepare, to train, to execute, and also the major takeaway that I have and what I plan to utilize my lessons learned at the next step. Without further ado, first I would like to introduce the team for our conference chair recognition team. This is our team, our conference education chair, me, Toastmaster Bob, Alicia, and Kitty Brando. Many of you know Bob and Alicia, but Kitty, she's located on the west side. She is one of the longtime Toastmaster presenter and also contestants representing the West Side Toastmaster Club. And I had the honor to meet her through the interaction that I had starting in April. That's why we do this about a month ahead of the conference to prepare for the event. Now that's not to say that all the work we're putting is important, but before even I joined this team, they have already put in things behind the scene. And that's some of the things that you may not see. One area that I brought to the table is I introduced the idea of being a moderator because when you have a speaker, a speaker should focus on the presentation not the audience. That's what I come in as a liaison, as somebody who will communicate between the audience and the speaker virtually on Zoom. Now that was a month two when we started doing the Zoom conference. So still at the beginning level, learning how to do all of that for the very first time. First task that I was uh, tasked is to provide a training for a presenter and moderator and now you can see this slide deck later on, uh, on the District 10 website, but some of you were here in Transpiration. Recognize your faces? Do you recognize your faces? Thank you, not just the presenter, but also the phone you could help out. Yes, I saw you, Malcolm. I saw you, Joe. I saw you, Matt. Those are great engagement. This is one of my training sessions on how to be a moderator. Now, have I done this before? No, this is the first assignment. So the first lesson I learned is how do you step outside of your comfort zone and do something that you've never tried before. And that's what I've done. I was paired up with speaker Joe and speaker Andrew Winter. Andrew recently returned from Florida. He wanted to give a very intriguing subject that I will share later, but Joe also have a very, very educational moment to share. And that is my honor, not just being the moderator, but to learn from their topic, 
what better way to learn from their topic by being a volunteer? Lessons number two, I learned by volunteering. And that was a testimony in Toastmaster. We also was paired up with our Zoom host. Uh, currently, I'm the Zoom host for this meeting, so I have the privilege to assign breakout room, mute people, or mute people. While those tasks might seem mundane, tedious, they are very important. This is month number two when we do our Zoom meeting, heading to month number three, and we're still new with this technology. So there are certainly a lot of technical hurdles. So the lessons learned I hear is overcoming the technical challenges. Also, I have done a lot of rehearsal. You notice we put together a statement, we put together a rehearsal. The education session leading to it, we have to prepare for it, a full hour rehearsal beforehand. Again, behind the scene, I want to show it to you. This is during the happy hour. David, you were here. <laughs> I was there. And also some of you were here as well. Before the meeting, we'll like to kick it off with engagement. Now, I haven't really done volunteering on this aspect. That was a happy hour, but I was trying to engage my audience already on Friday now. Now, for the whole conference, this is the agenda. I know it's very worthy. <laughs> the thing that I want you to pay attention is the red box. This is where I come in. But you can see the whole conference compared to what I, the session that I'm participating in is. Screen on the right are all the team behind the scene. So learning how to talk behind the scene is lesson number three. How do you work behind the scene? So often people don't see, they see the end product. They don't see behind the thing, the efforts that went into it. There's so many, so much more that we have to recognize. This is lesson number three, understanding behind the thing work. For Joe sessions, I didn't go AWOL. Just because I disappear doesn't mean that I'm not helping Joe. A trick that I learned is I use a slider on my camera like this. You can't see me anymore. I'm not invisible, but I'm in the background. I'm still here. I'm here to do what when Joe's presenting? I'm here to monitor my participants, the chat. We have up to 54 participants for Toastmaster Joe. That's a lot of people. So I was monitoring chat, wondering Q&A questions, how do I communicate between the audience and the speaker. Keep in mind, we only have three persons on screen. The rest, their video turned off and they're muted. So the only communication channel you have is the chat box. Same thing go with Andrew. Andrew even take it that step next level further. He utilized technology. There's an app that you can collect instant survey. He was trying to figure out how many generations are there in Toastmaster. Now the bar chart really shocked me. It is 59% baby boomer. 59%, that's 60%. That's a huge number. I'm applying that all the baby boomers know how to use Zoom and the rest of us learning. That's lessons number four. How to communicate across generation gap. You saw, this is a data, real life data that Andrew put together that I had to send a message out to my audience. We vote. Same thing, when our district directors about to speak, I was behind the scene. I was trying to educate what are the major takeaway and to conclude with emphasis. I also had the privilege to spoke with a VIP guest. His name is Michael Pope. He is the division director of District 40. Uh, he invited me down to a lot of events. So one thing lead to another because of my involvement in District 10. Now I have involvement outside of District 10. Now to wrap up my points, these are the three major things that I have learned. Cross-functional teamwork, communication channel, and last but not least, but most important, cultural diversity immersion. Kayla gave a very good thought of the day today about the recent tragedy event from George Floyd. My focus is to educate my audience. And in the topic of cultural diversity immersion, what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to launch a new club. I had the privilege to work with our district director, Savanti Philanthropy. She shared that diagram with me. There's so much more that we don't see in an iceberg of diversity, and we want to promote it. So fellow Toastmasters and guests, I would like to invite you to join this new club. This is a specialty club that I will go into more detail after my speech, but with a focus on diversity, to take a look, peek under the waterline, and to amalgamate all my lessons learned previously, I would like to combine that lessons learned 
doing something meaningful for the community to promote diversity. Back to you, Postmaster John. David, thank you so much for a very, very good speech. Uh, I appreciate uh, being a part of it, I guess. Um, Ms. Timer, if you would please put one minute on the clock, 